Hey folks, how y'all doing? Welcome back in old man in the land of girls. Yep, we're gonna cook for the first time on the Lifetime Gas Grill and Pellet Smoker. Folks, uh, I did a review on this actually yesterday. I'll leave the link down below if you're watching this for the first time. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, folks, this is a very unique grill where it's a gas grill. You can see the four knobs on front in there. And then there's also a pellet grill in there. So yesterday we used the gas grill side to do the burn-in, got it up, it went over 700 degrees. Let that sit for about 30 minutes, burned everything out of there. Today, we're gonna use that uh, pellet grill side. It's got a very unique grease management system on it. And that's what we wanna do today. I've got part of a pork butt, four pounds of pork butt that we're gonna put on there. I'm not trimming off anything. And we're gonna see how this thing handles the grease. First things first, to get the pellet grill going, folks. So first time I ever use a pellet grill, I always watch to make sure I got fire. I have put pellets in there and there is a prime button. And I used the prime button to get the pellets to the burn pot, which is right about there in the center. So I already got that. We're gonna get it out on, on the driveway. We're gonna get her fired up. Give you a look, see at fire, because that's always fun to see. And then we'll take a look at the pork butt. And then we're gonna low and slow that pork, pork butt. And then you know what? We are gonna use, the, you can see what Tom Wise is called fusion fuel. Well, it's because you can use the gas with the pellet. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk all the way through this, talk about some unique features and uh, cook a pork butt all at the same time. All right, the controller is really easy to understand. You turn it on by pressing that button. You turn that off by press, pressing that button. And then to set the temp, you push this. And then we set it. And we're gonna just gonna, we're gonna leave it on that 180 and see how it does. And then to start it, you just press this. So you can see it's got the augers on, hot rods on, and the fan is on. It shows you that. And as these go on and off, it'll show you that too first time using it so we're going to learn together folks the nlps may mean that's the probe there's no probe i am going to use a probe today this has three probe ports and guess what they give you three of them and they're color coordinated so you can figure out and if you're wondering what that is down there that's a latch to lock your pellet dump so it has a pellet dump in it too it's pretty cool well there's our first smoke and there's our first fire folks you always leave a pellet grill open and uh until you get fire we got fire so let's take a quick look People are gonna ask about this grease tray that I keep talking about. That's it right there, it's it's standing up. Uh, but that thing is very unique, folks. And go back to the review I did on this yesterday if you wanna see more about that. We're gonna get that in there along with all the uh, flavorizer bars and everything, and um, we'll get cooking here. All right, so there's our four pound pork butt. Didn't trim any fat off that. I want that fat to be leaking down. We were wondering what I used. Uh, well, this burn pit barbecue, folks. Uh, uh, sweet heat barbecue. Well, I'm out of it too. So uh, we'll get this on. All right, smokes are rolling. I say this all the time. A lot of people question whether or not you get smoke from a pellet grill. Yeah, you do. Now, this thing is, I got it set at 180 and it's holding 180. So the, the question is going to be, is it PID or is it not PID? Well, so far I haven't seen, you know, and I'm, this is very early. We're in the first 30 minutes here. I, I have not seen any fluctuation once it got the 180 it's been holding 180 so uh i'm impressed with that we'll uh keep on going here i'm actually going to work up uh hook up the app so you folks can see how that works all right like i said so we were early <laughs> so yeah there there are some temperature swings right now we're down 165 i did hook up the app here uh, curious thing about this app is that uh, and a lot of these are like this they don't work on 5g so if you got 5G, it's not gonna work. And this thing is still under development. So uh, they're still working on it, on it but it, it's telling you right now, you got a set of 180, temperature is 165, got it. And then uh, my probe is reading 46. Uh, and uh, I don't know what the 180, I tried pressing set and going to a whole bunch of other things, but it says it's still under development. So like, so this thing is brand new and they're still working on it, but uh, it works. And I'm, I'm not an app kind of guy, especially when it comes to cooking, but uh, if you are, uh, then this might be for you. So yesterday we talked about not only do you got a chimney, but you have this whole back vent. Is there's a little slit in through here. Uh, it's not that it's not that wide. Maybe the figure doesn't even fit through it. So maybe quarter to half an inch. And so that does vent too. And then this is that uh, baked on enamel they got there. So that'll be easy to clean. And, and as you know, I like to keep my grills clean. All right. So we are uh, an hour and nine minutes into it. What what I've noticed, it goes down to about 165. But when it comes back up, it seems to catch itself right at 180. 180 is what it's set at. So, uh, you know, it's got like a 15 degree range 
and it seems like it's on the low side and uh, it catches itself at 180 and then hangs around there and then goes back down to 165 and that's kind of where you get your smoke we're, we're hanging right around 180 right now uh, so we're not in a, like a smoke cycle this seems to happen about every five minutes or so so let, let's uh let's take a look see shall we i am spraying with a little bit of a sorry about that a little bit of apple juice get a little color on there the apple juice because the sugar in there will help uh make a nice bark bark is what we want so far so good with the uh lifetime give you a couple more look sees I, I plan on doing 180 for maybe a total of two and a half hours bumping up to 225 our internal right now for the probe is 95 so uh you know we'll, we'll keep on going give you a couple looks -sees. all right folks we are coming up on a little over three hours here uh, i've been doing some playing around <laughs> because I just wanted to experiment it. We got set at 300, we see we're 285. Our internal is uh, reading one, 168. So what I was curious about, because they talk about using fusion fuel, they use the gas and the pellets together. Now in the directions, it says that you're using it to, the gas to supplement the pellets on those really cold days. Well, it's not really cold today. It's in the upper 20s, the sun is shining. It's, it's actually a pretty nice day. So I tried it anyway. And I set this down to 180, the lowest it can go, and turn the furthest burner away um, from the temp probe. Remember, the temp probe's over here. And I put that at about half. And it took the temperature right around 300. And I was getting smoke, and I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, you, you can use gas to get high temp and have this set at 180 and getting the smoke from having on, on what, what is pretty much low smoke. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool, but I went about a half an hour for that. And I, and, and I noticed that I was getting smoke, I wasn't getting smoke. And uh, I came out and looked and um, what was happening is it was flaming out. So that probe in there knows what the temp is. That was only looking for 180 and this was 300. So it wasn't feeding any more pellets in. And uh, <laughs> what happened is that it was turning the hot rod on and restarting the, and that went three times before I finally figured it out and say, hey, look what's going on there. So can you use the gas with the pellet? Yeah, you can to supplement the pellets, but it's not really meant to be used together, especially when you've got to set at 180 and you're reading 300 inside. So I hope, you know, I, that's why I do these things, folks. I, I do them for you so you understand. All right, let's take a look. Oh man, it's a really nice color on there. I can hear it sizzling down there. I uh, can't wait to see how it's doing, but we're gonna, we're gonna check out to see how consistent the temp is with the probe. Got our thermal thermal pop. And I don't know if you can see that. We're reading uh, almost 160 on the thermal pop. The, the internal probe is reading 170. So uh, yeah, it's about 10 degrees off, depending upon which one you want to believe. But what we're going to do is we are going to wrap. We're going to wrap. And we're gonna take advantage of the fact that uh, once it's wrapped in there, you don't need to use the pellets anymore. So I'll turn the gas on, turn the pellets off, and uh, see how that works. All right, like I said, we're gonna wrap. Uh, we got the rest of the apple juice in there. It is co covered with some aluminum foil. And then we're gonna put it on, then we're gonna show you how we're gonna shut off the pellet grill part and use the gas to finish up, because why, why waste pellets at this point, right? All right, uh, we got it all covered in there. You see we're uh, set at 300, we're at 315. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shut off the pellet grill part of it. And we're gonna turn on the gas grill part of it. And uh, hang on, let me uh, turn on the gas and we'll turn on the, we're gonna turn on that burner and that burner. All right, so when the fan turns off, it's gonna go down its cool down cycle for the burn pot. But then uh, we're gonna leave the pellet grill part on because that'll still give me uh, that'll give me temp readings and you can see I've got and I'm going to turn this down here because I don't want to get it overly hot in there so we'll just have to see how two of them you know and remember our pork butts in the middle there and just monitor those temps what we're talking about temps I've had a couple of people ask Tom there's no there's no lid temp and you're right there isn't um, say you just want to use the gas grill portion of it alone you didn't want to plug it in so you get the the, the temp like that um yeah i i agree with those who think and i've been thinking about where where they should be and obviously on the hood right here and right here might be the best spots for them although you could go through the sides too and put up high one on this side and uh 
one on that side, but I, I really think that's something that's kind of needed. Or you could just put one in the middle too, I guess. Uh, so, uh, decisions, decisions, folks. Keep on going. Give you a look. See once uh, once it's pulled out. And, and you know we're gonna we are gonna take a look at the grease. So uh, let's uh, we'll get there. Right, so once the pull grill shuts off, it turns the controller off. So then you got to turn it back on, and you just leave it like that. And it'll give you the temp right there. You can see we're running 355 right now. We got that one and that one. We got them down on low and 355. Let's take a look at the internal. I put some of my pucks in there just to see uh, on the top shelf to see what temps are running in there. And you can see we're 325 there, 325 there, and uh, 325 there. So pretty consistent temps on gas uh, and uh, well, it smells very good, but we really, i tell you what, let me uh, open this up and let's take a look and see uh, what we did on grease. All right, let me see if I can hold you and reach in there and get this. Oh, hey, look at that. Got some grease in there. So uh, it did collect grease. Uh, gosh darn, now I want to pull that back tray out. I want to, yeah, I think we can. Let's uh, see how it looks on the back tray. All right, so it's cool to the touch. Let's see if we can't uh, pull it out of there. Okay, well, you can see the grease is supposed to go that way to that hole, and it did. Remember, there's two of them, so that's the first one. Let's take a look at the next one. Yeah, you can see we got a little buildup, so we'll have to do some cleaning, but you can tell it did run from this way to that way, so it, it is working as advertised. You know what? I can probably take this out and clean it now. That way it saves on cleanup afterwards. And you're seeing a little dust in there. That's from, that's from the pellets. All right, so uh, <laughs> this is pretty cool. You can clean it up while you're still cooking. All right, so there it is all kind of cleaned up. I uh, wanted to get some of the bigger lumps out of it. That'll keep the, the ne next, uh, next cook, the grease from flowing down there. But it, it did work. Uh, I just used a little bit of uh, citrus based to grease around there. I had somebody asking me this morning, kind of teasing me, saying, well, Tom will probably, even though it says don't use aluminum foil, and I was thinking how this would be really difficult to use aluminum foil on. You have to make all those intricate bends or something like that. Uh, if they had a foil liner that they made just to fit this with the holes in it and everything like that, that would that would be pretty cool too. But uh, <laughs> we'll keep on going here. Give you a look, see at the final product. Uh, so far, so good. All right, folks, there she is. Uh, five and a half hours total. Been resting for about half an hour now. Got a bone here coming right out. So closer look. It's still hot. The smell of the apple. Oh man, I'll tell you what, that's pretty nice. So let's yeah, let's, let's take a look here. So we can get a better piece here so we can see. Yeah, look at the you can see the smoke ring right there. Do the smoke ring. Let's uh let's take a taste test, shall we? Nice smoke ring from the lifetime. A little crust on there, some bark. So what? Very good. Give my final thoughts. All right, final thoughts. <laughs> There's a lot going on here with this grill. Pellet grill, gas grill. We, we tried them both. We, we tried to see if we couldn't get them to both work together. We found out that eh, it's not really designed that way. That uh, the gas is more of an assist when you're having a hard time reaching temps with the uh, pellet part of it. Uh, the pellet part of it did work good. Uh, I, I got no issues with the pellet part of it. it 180 and I had it as high as 300 and uh, I think it goes to 400. So I, I don't doubt that that does not work. It does, 28 pound hopper, no problem there. Gas on the same, on that, on that side, no problem. All four burners, uh, we had it over 700 and we did, did the burn in like, like 715, I believe. And uh, so it gets plenty hot. Uh, we wanted to see about the grease tray today and how it worked and we did see that it does work. What I didn't show you is during cleanup here, you've got flavorizer bars you've got to clean. And then there's, if you remember those, are stainless steel inverted Vs that fit underneath the, uh, the burners that take some of the grease to that drip tray down below. And those needed to be cleaned too. So there's a little bit of cleaning involved. Now, can you, when you're done, turn all four of those on high and burn it out? Yeah, probably. And I would recommend, uh, if you don't want to clean it like I do, uh, to definitely do that if you're doing a low and slow. If I do low and slow on there again, I'll use the top shelf and I'll put a drip tray underneath, but I just will. It saves, it saves on cleanup, folks. 
It really does. But overall, everything performs as advertised. And it's also $1,400. So it's a decision you have to make, folks. Uh, you're saying, Tom, what about, what about the temp pros? What about, yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Uh, I would probably put two on the hood there. Uh, it's double walled, just so I got to make sure that I got enough uh, thread to go through that. So I'll have to research that a little bit further before I actually do it and end up with two holes that I can't use. So, uh, well, uh, folks, uh, is it going to go in the rotation? Yeah, I, I expect that you will see another cook or two from this grill coming up in the near future here, folks. Tom Horseman, YouTube, you leave me your thoughts on the Lifetime uh, pellet slash gas grill. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate it.